Hello, and just want to say congratulations on getting access to this video course on how to take your online course and setting it up on WordPress so that you can begin to accept sales. All right, so let's jump right in to the introduction here. Now, I want to make things clear here, and the condition of this course is that we assume that you already have an online course and the videos on hand. So this video course is not about how to create an online course. It's just merely taking that course and setting it up on your WordPress site. So now that we've gotten that clarification out of the way, what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course. This is video number one, video number two, we're going to talk about the big problem. So before we dive in and talk about how to, you know, set things up and all the technical aspects of everything. We want to tackle a major problem and a major reason why most people do not consume your course. We'll dive into it a lot deeper, but statistically they say that only about 10% of your online course is consumed, meaning most of your students will come in, they'll buy your course, and they'll only consume about 10% and then they'll quit. So we need to combat that, right? We need to set the experience up so that we can increase that number. So that is what that video is all about. And as you can imagine, that is crucial to tackle before we talk about the technical aspect of setting things up, because actually setting things up is actually very easy. Video number three, we're going to talk about the experience. So once we understand the problem, we need to understand how to make a better experience for your students so that they consume the online course from start to finish. And then we'll talk about the technical aspect in video number four, such as the WordPress LMS plugin and LMS stands for learning management system. And it's basically a system that allows you to set up your online course. So it's the environment that surrounds the course. So once I've given you a broad overview of different plugins that are out there and available to you, video number five, we'll talk about recommended WordPress LMS plugin that we highly recommend. And of course, video number six, we're going to talk about consumption boost. So based upon the big problem, how do we not only combat it, but boost the consumption rate? How do we get people to engage with this to continue to the end? And of course, video number seven, we'll talk about engagement. How do we get people to engage with your online course? And last but not least, we got video number eight, which is prestige and fun. And all that means is trying to make people feel good about themselves as they complete your course. And we'll talk more about that and why that's important and all of that. So let's talk about getting started. What do you need? So you obviously need to have your course. You need to have the videos in hand. So the video files, the MP4 files, whatever video files that you have, you need to have them in hand. Now, if you don't have this already, that's fine. You can do this later. We're not really going to discuss this, but you will need to take those videos and you will need to upload them to a video hosting company. So for example, we've got Vimeo.com. We recommend that highly. And Wistia.com is another video hosting. And once you set all these up, you can take the embed codes and then, of course, and enter it into LearnDash or whatever WordPress LMS plugin that you desire to use. And of course, you'll need to have some money to purchase a WordPress LMS plugin. There are some free ones out there, but what we found over the years is that free is not always the best. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you put yourself on a good platform that is constantly updated and grows as you grow. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. 
Hello and welcome back. This is video number two, The Big Problem. So we briefly touched base on this, but I'm gonna dive a lot deeper in this particular video. You see, the biggest problem is not getting your site set up to sell, but rather getting your students to consume your course. Here's a big quick fact. Did you know that most students consume less than 10% of a course? So what happens is they buy a course, they're excited about it, but they just don't finish it. So you might have people finishing your course, but let's say out of 100 or even out of 1,000 people, that number actually becomes very, very small. And there's a big reason for that, which we'll touch base in just a second. So the goal here, as you can imagine, is not only to set up your online course onto your WordPress site and set it up so that you can start selling it, but also to get your students excited to go through your course. And here's why. It's a known fact that if you can get your students to consume your course, they're gonna to wanna to buy more from you. They're going to feel like, wow, I really enjoyed that course, I want more. So if you put yourself in their shoes and maybe you've bought a course and you, you just never have finished it, or maybe you have gone through a course and you feel like, wow, I got so much value out of this. I wanna see if this person has a different course. So in other words, you feel impacted by that person. So with the law of reciprocation, you want to seek them out more. So the big question is, how do you go about doing this? Well, to set the stage, we're gonna be covering this in a lot more depth in this course. But what you wanna do is you will want to prep your course outline and lay it all out so that it is easy to consume. Now, obviously you already have a online course in hand. What we're doing here is we are basically going to break things down so that you can see, okay, the first thing, this is what they see. They see this video afterwards, or maybe in between these videos, we could add something else that's highly engaging and things like that. So it's not necessarily that you are having to re-edit your course. It's basically making it in more engaging, all right? And it'll make more sense in just a second. So in other words, you want to make sure that your experience is as easy as possible. You want to add engagement through quizzes, through forums, or a comment section. You also want to gamify, or in other words, make the course fun. So you can go all out. You can even use a system like gamapress.com and integrate it into certain WordPress plugins and you can do things like, okay, somebody gets points when they log in, they get points when they do certain things within the course, and maybe they can rack up those points and use that points to buy other things. So as you can imagine, even as adults, if you gamify things, it increases the chance of somebody actually consuming your course. All right. so. Now that you have a general overview of the big problem, kind of what we need to do, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about the experience. So how can we increase that consumption rate through the experience? Hello and welcome back. This is the experience and video number three. So what we're gonna do, like we talked about earlier, is we are going to prep your course outline. So in other words, what we're gonna do is we are going to plan ahead before we do any sort of implementation. So prepping your course outline from the moment they purchase to the moment they finish consuming your course is very important. So in other words, what we're trying to do is we're trying to lay out all the steps that they must go through because this is crucial. So in other words, step by step by step. Now, for example, the very first video should be about introducing your students, and that's really important. So if you don't have that, you might want to make that as an addition. 
So you might want to say, thank you for your purchase. Uh, here's a quick overview of all the videos that are laid out and show it in action. And oftentimes you want to make this video last because this will be after you've set everything up. So you'll be able to show, okay, so you log into this WordPress site. This is what you do. You can see lesson one, two, three, four, five. You can see these topics, all that. So what that does is it puts people in the frame of mind of, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I can expect. And it kind of takes away that fear. So you need to give people an idea of what to expect because a lot of times they have anxiety or fear of what's ahead. And that anxiety or fear a lot of times is what prevents them from moving forward. So what you're doing here is you're helping them move forward. Next, you want to make sure that these steps from there make it easy for your students to consume your content. So like I previously mentioned, maybe you have the welcome video. And then after that, you have maybe a, a checklist that they can download and whatever else will make it easier. So in other words, you don't have to necessarily make more videos besides the first introduction video, but you want to lay it out so that you can see, okay, so should I put all of these videos, step one, step two, step three, all different steps, or should I do video one and maybe the introduction and the video one and then a checklist and maybe a Word document of some sort in between the videos so that I don't overwhelm people and all that. And we'll talk about drip feeding and how to prevent people from being overwhelmed. So in other words, what I'm talking about here is basically adding buffer pages or pages in between each video if they need more clarification. Now, the only way to know how to do all of this is to map it out, all right? So let's head on over to a mind mapping software and do this now. Okay, so I wanna say that it doesn't matter what you use to map your plan or outline out. What I'm using here is a software. It's an online web application called Lucid chart. That's lucidchart.com. Now, if you're not a visual person and you would prefer to use something like notepad or a piece of paper, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's just a matter of mapping it out so that you are able to see step one, step two, step three, and all the steps ahead so that you can take this blueprint and implement it later down the road. So we got this here. This is the online course. And the next one, we're going to say video number one. And actually before that, of course, we have the introduction or quick overview. A lot of times, like I said, I like to complete this video after everything has been set up. So as you can imagine, if your site has been set up and laid out, and then you make this video, what this enables you to do is show people everything in action. So whatever they see on your screen is likely what they are seeing on their screen as well. So what it does, like I said, is it takes away that anxiety. So the next thing we've got is from, let's say the introduction, we have video number one. And of course, typically, if you have your course in hand, you're automatically gonna have, you know, video one, video two, video three. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to say we've got four different videos. Now, obviously most video courses and online courses are going to be a lot longer than that. So what we want to do now is let's actually move this up. 
let's see here. What I like about Lucid Chart is you can pretty much map it out so that you can see, okay, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three. And we move from here to here. And let's see here, here to here, and here to here, like that, all right? So this is our whole course. And what I wanna do now is get a better view of how can I make this more engaging? Perhaps what are areas that people are confused about? And how can I improve my students' success rate? So obviously, if you have your online course, you're very passionate about your course and you're very passionate about helping your students. So once you have that, you can figure out, okay, you know, we're gonna go through here. We got the online course, we got the introduction, the quick overview, and they have video number one. And let's say video number one, a lot of times when people get overwhelmed, they go from video one, video two, and then video three, and then they start to get overwhelmed. So in order to do this, what we wanna do is we wanna break things up. And the way you break things up, like I mentioned earlier, is to add buffer pages. So what we could do here is video number one, we could have, in addition to that, we could have a document maybe a checklist or a summary of video one. And maybe after that, you can create some homework. Now, you don't have to call it homework. Homework sometimes has a bad connotation. So you can say to do list. So before they can move on to video number two, in other words, they have to do the to-do list. So maybe they learned something here and they need to implement that in here. So you see what's happening? The majority of courses have it where it's like watch video one, watch video two, watch video three, and then they get overwhelmed and they quit. So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to break things down so that it's not as overwhelming. All right, so once they've finished the to-do list, then they can move on to video number two. So in that case, we delete that arrow. So it goes from here to here. And then next we have video number two to three. Now, during tests, we found that a lot of times when you have some sort of document, like a checklist or a summary of that video, it helps, it helps a lot. So let's see here, let's move this up here like this. And from video two, we have another checklist and a summary. and maybe a to-do list. So as you can see, the to-do list basically tells people, okay, this is what you need to do next. So you need to do this next before you get to the next video. So we do that. Now we wanna mix things up. You don't want it to stay too consistent. So maybe after video number three, we can offer something like We'll do summary is good, but maybe instead of a to-do list, we have a quiz, but a short quiz, not a long quiz, but a short quiz. Remember, you don't over want to overwhelm people. So we're gonna delete this. We're gonna go from the short quiz to video number four. Now you could set it up so that in order for them to move to video four, they have to get the questions right. 
But from our findings, what we found is a lot of times that can become frustrating, especially if they answer it wrong. So what that does is it makes things uh, negative and we don't want to create a negative environment. You want to keep things positive and keep them excited. So let's move from a short quiz to video number four. So same thing here. We can do this here and we'll do video four and that here. Now what's nice about WordPress, the plugins that we're going to be using is that you can also add things like certificates. So in other words, when they finish the course, they get a certificate with their name on it. Now you can do that with the plugin that we recommend, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Now, what I want to say is a lot of times what people do is they, they buy the course, but in order for them to stay, there needs to be a community or they need to have the ability to engage with you. So having sold many courses over the years, we found that even though the, the, there's a course, if there's no community, it's hard to get people back to your site. So that's kind of a basic outline here. And we definitely want to keep things basic. You don't want to complicate it any further. We can add things like forums, which we'll discuss later on. So we could add a forum. And typically you want to, after the introduction video and the quick overview, you could send them to a link to the form. Now, depending on how you set things up, if you ha have a Facebook group, you can send them to that link. If you're utilizing the WordPress plugin that we recommend, sometimes they are connected to forums like BB Press and other community and forum plugins. So that's kind of a brief map of what you can do. You can do anything that you want. Uh, just make sure that it's not too overwhelming because as you can see, this is video number four and we've already got so many different steps. We want to make it fun. We want to make it short and quick, but we don't want to have too many steps. So one thing you could do is you could just have maybe a to-do list and a summary and a to-do list all bundled up into one. You could do that. You could break these up into sections like lessons and maybe have a summary for the whole lesson instead of each individual video. So those are just some general ideas that you can use. Okay, so welcome back. This is video number four, and we're gonna talk about uh, different WordPress learning management system plugins that are available to you. Now, obviously there are tons and tons of tons of ones out there, but here's just some of the top ones that are available to you. Now, let's be honest, choosing the right WordPress learning management system is crucial to your success. So really it ends up being your choice at the end of the day. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a look at each site, each plugin, what features they offer and get an idea of what you want to do because what you want to do may be different than what I want to do or what somebody else wants to do. So you're going to know that better than anyone else. So there are some free ones out there, but here's the thing. Is it really worth it? Because the reality is that your site is important and being able to set things up, accept payments. A lot of times you'll make that money back. That's obviously not a guarantee, but uh, it's all about the experience. If you can create a better experience for people, like I said, the consumption rate is going to go up and they will most likely want, want to come back. So that's what I want you to do is to look through the plugins that we're gonna talk about in this video and 
ask yourself, is this what my students are going to enjoy? Don't even think about price right now. Just think about that right now. Okay, so there are about five WordPress LMS plugins that we're going to go over in this video. But the first one is one that we highly recommend that you get access to. And the reason why is because not only does it offer pretty much every feature that we discuss in this video course, but in addition to that, it also integrates into all sorts of membership plugins, into a lot of different other WordPress plugins that enable you to do much more, to make a, not just an online course, but a community that is engaging and that is uh, has gamification built into it via other integrations. And I'll show you that in just a second, but learndash.com. And as you can see here, it, it looks really nice. And actually, as of now, LearnDash 3.0 was just released and it looks really, really nice. So if we scroll down here, you can kind of get an idea. You can sell your courses, you can drip feed content, you can deliver certificates, points, and badges to encourage learners, and you've got engagement triggers. So based upon different actions that the student takes, you can either message them automatically or uh, do certain things. So that's nice about LearnDash. It's not just an online learning management system that accepts money and delivers your content, but it's, it's just so much more than that. All right, so you can see you can create groups. You can manage learning progress. So you can see uh, where the student is in terms of their learning path, what they've completed, and you can get reports as well that tell you kind of a bird's eye overview of everybody in your course. So if you scroll back to the top, you can click features here. And there's a lot of things here. It's, you can do quizzing, advanced quizzing. You can create courses very, very easily. You got uh, prerequisites that you can create. You have dynamic forums. You have grade books. You have course points. So you can award points for completing courses and unlock new ones. You got certificates and badges. This is the reason why we like LearnDash is because it's it provides you with tons and tons of different features. You don't need to use every single one of them, but it's there in case you grow. And that's something to think about, you know, as a business person, you need to think long term. So instead of thinking, okay, this is what I need now, think about, okay, this is what I need now, but I can have the potential of growing, you know, this site, this business to many different courses, to a community kind of thing. Now, before we talk about LearnDash and you know how to integrate it with uh, gamification and all of that, uh, let me talk about the other WordPress plugins. And in fact, what I'll do is when I give you a LearnDash overview in the next video, we'll discuss that, all right? So the next, WordPress LMS plugin is called Lifter LMS. That's lifterlms.com. And as you can see here, it says everything you need to create, sell, protect your online courses. So if we scroll down here, you can get an idea of uh, what it offers. And like I said, what I recommend that you do is jot down what your vision is or what are the elements and the features that you will need. So that's one, that's the second one. The third one is called WP Courseware and you can get here by going to flyplugins.com slash WP-courseware. 
or you can simply go to google.com and type in WP Courseware and you'll get this page. Now, WP Courseware has actually been around for a good amount of time. In fact, uh, when WordPress Elements systems began to develop, uh, they were actually one of the first few ones. So they've evolved a, a good amount over the years. Now, as you can see, they've got drag and drop, they got drip content, which is uh, pretty standard nowadays. They, you can protect your courses, quizzes, you can manage students, you've got membership integration, and shopping cart integration. All right, so that's the third one. The fourth one, uh, which is actually by WooCommerce, it's called Sensei. And Sensei is another WordPress plugin. Now bear in mind that Sensei is not as feature rich compared to LearnDash. It is feature rich in the sense that it can provide a lot of different things like quizzes and the standard items. But beyond that, really learn dash really goes above and beyond and of course last but not least we have namaste lms that's uh, namaste dash lms dot org and this one says that it is free but they have a free version and of course they have a pro version so if we click on go pro so namaste lms pro version you can create classes, you can assign teachers to the class, you can award badges, you can reorder courses, manage files. So a lot of basic elements, essentially. Now, if we go to other modules, you can kind of get an idea of additional plugins that are on top of the Namaste LMS system. So as you can see, it's a fairly basic and it might be something that you need. I mean, if you're low budget, you can do this first, but bear in mind that as you grow, it'll be a pain to switch. So that's why I say start with the one that really works for you first. It can be Learn Dash, it can be uh, something else, but stick with that first and think about it and review it and look at the features and see if that is going to take you, you know, a few years or even five years down the road. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number five. Let's talk about the recommended WordPress LMS plugin. So as you saw in the previous video, there are tons and tons of different WordPress LMS plugins, but we recommend LearnDash. And the reason why we recommend LearnDash is it's based on Fortune 500 company courses. So the guy behind it is very knowledgeable of learning management systems. So he's not just someone who decided, oh, you know, one day I'm going to create this with, and I have no experience. It's somebody who actually has experience and created it based on their experience. And looking through LearnDash, uh, utilizing it ourselves, uh, we've come to like it. And uh, what's nice about LearnDash is it also integrates into a lot of other plugins, such as uh, GammaPress.com, which allows you to gamify your online course and much more. So that's something else that you want to think about is, does the WordPress plugin that I'm using going to integrate with a lot of other WordPress plugins, because if it doesn't, it kind of limits your ability to grow. It might work now, but as you grow, uh, that'll create more problems later down the road. So let's jump on into LearnDash and I'll give you a quick overview of how things are laid out. Okay, so before I give you a quick overview of LearnDash, I want to briefly talk about uh, LearnDash, the add-ons that it offers, and integration into things like GammaPress.com. So if you go to LearnDash.com and you go to add-ons, you'll be able to see, besides the main features, what it can integrate into. So for example, it can integrate into WooCommerce, Stripe, different shopping carts so that allows you to uh, take in money 
You can do a course grid, which makes your courses look nice. You can integrate it into BuddyPress, which basically makes it into uh, kind of like a Facebook atmosphere. You got LearnDash notifications. You got BBPress, which is uh, private forums. It also integrates into a lot of membership WordPress plugins. So I highly recommend that you come here to this site just to kind of get a view of what it provides so that you can see the potential of growing your site. So like I said, LearnDash is primarily for creating courses and uploading your courses. But if you combine the power of courses, community, and fun or gamification, those three components combined together can actually make it so addicting that people will not leave your community. So if you go to gamapress.com, that's gamipress, G-A-M-I, press.com, this integrates into LearnDash. Now you can see the potential here. So for example, and click on social. So you could connect GammaPress with YouTube or Vimeo. So in other words, you can give people points uh, based on if they watch a certain amount of video, they can do other things. Let's click on all. In fact, I'll click on pro add-ons. So they have free add-ons that you can use and they have pro add-ons as well. So you can see here if people refer their friends, they can get points for that. Another thing is daily login rewards. So that way you can get people to come back to your site and log in every single day. And by doing that, they get rewards and they get points that they could potentially use to buy other things. So now to integrate that, you would have to install something like WooCommerce. And from WooCommerce, that is the sort of the bridge between GammaPress and LearnDash. It enables you to uh, set things up so that people can get points. Uh, they can use those points to perhaps get discounts or even get certain things from your WooCommerce shop. So I wanted to show you that because that's very, very powerful to have. Okay, so now what I want to do is give you a quick overview of LearnDash. And LearnDash has been integrated into one of our sites, as you can see here. It says LearnDash LMS. And if you, once you've installed it, you can go to Overview. And I want to point out that in addition to all the features that LearnDash offers you, it also offers you a lot of helpful documentation and learning information. So a lot of times when you purchase software or get access to web applications, they don't really offer you enough information on how to implement their plugin. So a lot of times you are left with trying to figure things out yourself. So fortunately for you though, Learn Dash is so popular, you could either do it yourself or you could hire somebody on Upwork.com or other freelancing sites to actually set things up for you. Now, if we scroll up here, under Learn Dash LMS, we have courses. So that's pretty self-explanatory, but courses are essentially a series of videos. So one course could have uh, different lessons. So think of lessons kind of like a section. So for example, lessons could be sections. So you could have like section A, section B, section C, and then within the lessons you can have topics, all right? And this will give you a better idea when we take a look at a live site. So to give you an idea of what a Learn Dash course looks like, so this is chemistry, and this is a course. So it's gonna have the title, the description, the teacher here, and of course you can start the course. You can see the course includes two lessons, four topics, and one quiz. 
So it's really not laid out really nice. Now, it really depends on your WordPress theme. So you want to keep in mind that your WordPress theme is going to make the styling a little bit different. So the styling that you see here may be a lot different than your styling. So that's a demo course right here is a inside of the course of the chemistry course. And as you can see here, right here, these are sections and these sections are basically what we call lessons. And underneath the lessons, these right here are topics. So we got course here, we got lessons, and then we've got topics. So as we can see here, once you've watched the video and you can upload your videos, like I said earlier, to Vimeo or uh, any other video hosting site. And it's really easy to create this. All you have to do is embed the video, add some text, and that's it. So as you can imagine, if somebody's going through here, when they're done, they click on Mark Complete. And what's nice about Learn Dash is it pushes them to the next step. All right, so courses, lessons, topics, and then we got quizzes, which I'll discuss later down the road. We'll also discuss certificates later on. We've got assignments, we've got groups, we have reports, we have add-ons and settings. Now, within add-ons, that allows you to add uh, different elements to your learning management system. So we showed you earlier, if you go to the Learn Dash website and you go to add-ons at the top, you'll be able to get a list of uh, different add-ons that you can use and integrate into your site. Now, if we go into a course, in this case, we have philosophy, you can see that there's the title, the description right here. And then if you click on the builder, this allows you to build your course out. So we have the sections here so we can move things around. And as you can see, it's very easy. You can simply drag and drop things. So you've got lessons here. And if you click the drop down here, you've got the topics here and you can drop quizzes in between these videos if you want to do that. So you see why we mapped everything out in the past videos. This way we know exactly what steps to create once we get into Learn Dash. So we got settings and we've got groups. What's nice about this is you can create groups. So as you can see here, I've created the world history group and you can say, okay, the world history group over here has access to this course. So anybody who's taking this course is automatically dumped in to this particular group. So maybe you have one group that encompasses lots of different courses, or if you want to have a individual separate group, for every single one of your courses, you can do that as well. So now that you have a brief overview of Learn Dash, let's move on to the next video. Okay, so welcome back. This is video number six, and this is what we call the consumption boost. So we talked briefly about different ways to increase the consumption rate, but how can we increase it further. Now, before we can understand that, we need to talk about uh, a big problem. All right. So one of the reasons that people stop in the middle of a course is that they are overwhelmed. Now we talked briefly about this in the previous videos, but this is a big problem. People get anxiety. People get, you know, stressed out when they get in the middle course and they think, oh, this is so much information. I'm getting information overload. They start to second guess themselves and they start to have paralysis analysis. They ask all these questions, which then prevents them from actually moving forward. So how can we combat that? So the best way to avoid this is by what we call drip feeding. Drip feeding content, uh, the idea is simply to space things out so that people receive video one, video two, maybe the first day, 
maybe they have to do a to-do list uh, before they actually come go to video number three. So what we found over the years is, yes, it can be annoying to some people. And a lot of people get annoyed that by that because they are expecting all the videos at one time. But by giving them all the videos at one time, they don't realize that it actually goes against their success. So if you are going to do drip feeding, you may want to mention that in your introduction video and say, look, we've created this course to ensure that you have a high rate of success, that you are able to implement everything that we're going to teach you. So that's something to keep in mind. So like I said, a lot of people get annoyed by that, but like I said, in reality, your students are more likely to implement what you tell them if you space things out. So instead of giving everything on day one, you can spread it out. Now, the nice thing about LearnDash and other WordPress plugins is a lot of them enable you to drip feed. That's a very standard option these days. Now, you really need to weigh things out. Is that something you really need? Because if your course is very simple, maybe you don't need that. But if it's highly technical, a lot of times you will need that. So that's just something to bear in mind. Knowing your audience is key. So if your audience, let's say for example, is a lot of, a lot of newbies, you wanna make sure that you space things out. So now what I wanna do is uh, jump on over to LearnDash and show you around and show you the drip feeding feature and how to go about implementing that. Okay, so drip feeding your content is uh, very easy to implement. All you have to do is simply go to your course. In this case, we have philosophy. You wanna go to your builder and underneath your builder, you're gonna have uh, different lessons. So this is one lesson. This is lesson two. And within the lessons, we have two different topics for each. So let's say we want to release this immediately. And then we want to release this maybe two days later. So this one, we don't have to do anything because this is what they see first. This one will have to delay it by two days. To do that, it's really easy to do. You just click edit like that. And what that will do is it'll go into that particular lesson. And we want to go to settings. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's gonna say lesson release schedule. So this is the drip feed option. You can either have the lesson be made available immediately. So by default, they're all gonna be made available immediately. It says here, the lesson will be available X days after course enrollment, or the lesson will be available on a specific date. So specific date, the only time that you would use that is if you would have like a live class kind of thing. So most of you would use something like the enrollment based. So if we want to delay it by two days, you would simply enter two days like so. And that's it. So when you're done, you simply click update here and that's it. So that's what you're going to want to do. If you take a look at the, the map per se, so we got videos one, two, three, four. Let's say that the individual videos, are topics that are in two different lessons. So videos one and two are in lesson number one and three and four are in lesson number two. So what we can do there is looking at the map, we see what we need to do and we simply impl implement that. So if we have like a third lesson, you would simply go to that lesson like we did here and simply click on enroll based and do it two days later. So let's say we have three different lessons. So one is immediately, the second one is two days later, and the third one, let's do four days later because you need to start it after the course enrollment. So that's just something to keep in mind as you implement the drip feed system. And that's it, that's all you have to do. 
Hello, this is video number seven, and let's talk about engagement. So it's a known fact that people buy courses, but in order to, to get them to stay, you need to engage them. Now, there are two ways to do this. Number one, the first way is to add quizzes to engage directly with your students. So as we discussed, when we map things out, remember in video number three, we created a quiz, but we want to make sure that it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point, and it doesn't take too long. Now, you have to think, does my audience like quizzes? Because some people are get overwhelmed by quizzes. So this is all about you knowing your audience better than me. So if that's the case, you may not want to do quizzes. The second way is to have a community. People will stay longer when they don't feel that they are alone. A lot of times people pay more money to be part of a community. So if you don't have quizzes, you definitely want to have a community. Now you can achieve this by creating a forum and you can actually do this within LearnDash. So you can do both. You can do quizzes and forums. Now let's discuss how to go about doing this, all right? So to create a quiz, all you have to do is simply click on quizzes and this is the quizzes section. You can either create a new quiz or you can edit an existing one. Now, as you can see, you can create the quiz. You can assign it to an author. You can assign it to a course. Each quiz will have a unique short code that you can simply copy and paste that into a page. Now let's just click on edit here for the sake of showing you a populated quiz. And we can see quiz page. It says final quiz like that. So that's just the basics. And then we click on settings and this allows you to add it to an associated course, associated lesson. You can have quiz prerequisites. And you can have a passing score. Now, bear in mind, like I said earlier, if this is a group of people that may get overwhelmed if they get the quiz wrong and they can't move forward, that's something that you need to take into consideration. So if the passing score is 80 and your student continues to take the quiz, but they keep on getting like a 50, that could create a problem. So maybe you just want to do a fun quiz and do a passing score of zero, for example, or 10, something low. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now we've got a quiz certificate, so you can create certificates for that particular quiz. So for example, if this were an exam for something, you could give them a certificate for completing that exam. So obviously if that was the case, you can definitely up the passing score to something higher. And of course, once you create your quiz and that's pretty self-explanatory, but once you do that, uh, you can simply add it to the course builder and that's it. Now, of course, the second option is to create a community with, uh, it could be a forum or it could be a commenting system. So to do that, uh, you will need to have an add-on. If you go to LearnDash add-ons under third party, you will want to install the BuddyPress for LearnDash. So it says BuddyPress for LearnDash integrates the LearnDash LMS plugin with BuddyPress so that you can add groups, forums, members, activity to your courses. So you'll need to install that. And then next, what you want to do is you want to go to groups. You want to create a new group, name the group here, add a description, and then you simply scroll down and you can assign the admin. It says enable. If you enable this automatically, group enrollment when a user enrolls into a course. So you can say anybody who takes a specific course will be automatically added to this group. Now, when you create a group, you can automatically install, uh, delete that, uh, delete. 
right here, you can specify, okay, these are courses that have access to a certain group. So like I mentioned earlier, if you want to have one group for all of the classes, you can simply add all of these right here. Now, if you want to have an individual group that is focused for biology, a different group for chemistry, economics, and so forth and so on, uh, you can do that individually as well. Now, after that, you can assign a admin and the users. Now, LearnDash, like I said earlier, provides a lot of information on how to set up forums, how to do all these different types of features that you might want to do. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Okay, just want to say congratulations. You've reached the end of this course. This is, of course, video number eight, and this is about prestige and fun. So telling somebody congrats, you finished the course in the form of a certificate can go a long way. So as you can imagine, uh, most online courses don't have certificates. And if they do, a lot of times they don't have custom certificates with the person's name on them. So people's name is very, very important. You know, acknowledging people, giving them acknowledgement, prestige, and making things fun can actually go a long way. It's a known fact that people feel more connected when they are acknowledged. So for example, studies have shown that in terms of jobs, uh, people prefer being acknowledged a lot of times more than earning extra money. So a lot of times initially they think, oh, okay, I'm earning lots of money, but if you get into a job and you hate it, you're not being acknowledged, your boss you know, yells at you all the time, then it's not fun. And you're constantly thinking, how can I get out of this situation? But there's been studies showing where companies will purposely try to, you know, acknowledge people like good job, great job, you know, or let's model this person's success. Uh, let's, you know, do this and do that. And it brings them up so that they're not just acknowledged, but they feel valuable. So it gives them a sense of value, of prestige, and that they are set apart in this case, from people who are taking the course. So maybe you can have a leaderboard, you can show people who have completed the course, and maybe people who are highly engaged in your community. And you can do this with uh, integration with gammapress.com. So in other words, adding gamification in the form of badges, uh, maybe they've earned, can actually go a long way and can also add to the fun and prestige. So that's what we mean by fun and prestige. So let's discuss how you can go about integrating these two elements. So let's start things off with adding certificates to the system. So in order to do that, you can go to google.com, you can type in certificates, school blank, Pixabay, or whatever you want. So Pixabay is a site where you can find a lot of royalty-free images that you can use. So in other words, you don't have to pay any money to use these images. Now, when you look for a course certificate template, you want to find a template that doesn't have a lot of words because what you're going to eventually do is you're going to place text on top of the image. So whenever somebody completes a course, what the system will do is it'll auto generate, put their name or whatever you want here into the template. So it's okay to have some words, but you do want to have some bare spots. So for example, if you had a certificate that had a lot of words like this, that would not work. So all you need to do is simply download one of these. So let's go back up here. And I actually downloaded one earlier and I uploaded it as an example. 
But if you go over here and you can click on add new certificate, but I actually went ahead and did it here. So click on edit. What you need to do is simply scroll down. You select the featured image as that image. All right, so once you do that, you click on update and then you need to go back to the courses. And the reason why is because under the courses, there's a section for in the settings, if we go back to the courses here, that will allow you to connect the certificate to the course. So let's go to courses, let's click on edit, and we'll go to the settings. So click on settings here. And it says course certificate. All right. So once you have uploaded that image, you need to go back to the courses. You need to go under the settings here and click the drop down menu. And as you can see, it says test one. So test one was the certificate. So I click that, click on update. So now whenever somebody completes that course, they will get the certificate that we created with auto generated information on that certificate. So once you've done that, you can simply go back to the certificate section. You click on edit right here and we get sent back here. Once you do that and you click on visual, the certificate will show up. Now here's what you're going to need to do. The reason why you want to have an empty space here is because you are going to need to move your mouse eventually over here. Now I can't do that. You kind of have to move it up here first and then you can move things around like so. Now, if you're wondering where in the world did I get this information? So what you need to do is scroll to the top under learn dash short codes. You click on user meta and then it says field. So what you need to do is select user first name, user last name. So these are elements that you can add to the certificate. So if we did first name, which we actually did earlier, and it did last name. So we'll just do first name, click on insert short code. What that will do is it'll insert the short code wherever your mouse is. So in this case, we have first name. Now the user isn't going to see this text. So whenever the certificate is generated, they're going to see their name. So you could say, congratulations on completing this course, first name, last name, and that's it. So that's basically how to do it. It's really easy. It's not complex at all. Really what takes time is finding a certificate or even creating one that looks nice. And of course, once you're done, you simply click on update and that's it. Now, in terms of uh, gamification and making things fun, you'll need to go to add-ons and we'll need to find the gamma press, which is, it should be under third party. And there it is. So I'm not going to do it now, but you can simply click on install now. And of course I talked about gammapress.com in the previous videos. So uh, you should have already seen that. With GammaPress, you can start out with the free add-ons first, check out the pro add-ons and pick and choose what you want. Uh, don't go all out because otherwise that will definitely overwhelm you. And that's it.